Step 4, SPDC. In this step, we will learn how to actually generate uh, entangled state physically. And for that, we will need the process of spontaneous parametric down conversion or SPDC for short. And we will demonstrate it here with this little graphic. So imagine that you've got some laser light uh, represented by this green arrow and it's incident, normally we call it pump. And this pump uh, light is incident on a nonlinear crystal represented by this rectangle. And in this particular case, and it's a very popular case to use in practice, it's a BBO crystal, which stands for beta barium borate. And what actually happens is that uh, this pump laser gets transformed and split into two beams. One is called the signal, and the other one is called the idler. So if we actually zoom in into the crystal to see what happens to individual atoms, we get the following picture. The pump light is uh, uh, tuned to be resonant with some transition frequency uh, uh, of the atom inside the BBO crystal. So it affects only, to, it affects only uh, two levels to a good approximation. And the lower level we will call the ground state, and the upper level we will call the excited state. So the atom in the BBO crystal is in the ground state, but then it, uh, uh, it gets blasted by this uh, pump laser. What happens? The atom becomes excited and absorbs the energy uh, from the incoming pump laser. And after a short uh, time, the atom de-excites and ejects two photons traveling out. And these are our photons uh, with energy ES for the uh, signal photon, and uh, energy EI for the idler photon. And because uh, energy is conserved in this transition, we must have that the energy of the pump photon must be equal to the sum of the uh, our energies of the outgoing photons, the signal and the idler photons. So this is the basic process of a spontaneous parametric down conversion. Now let's see how uh, polarization of light uh, interacts with this process. So we are going to consider a linearly polarized light. So if we again take our uh, green pump laser, we can make it oscillate only in one plane. For example, if we make it oscillate in the horizontal plane, this can encode uh, our zero state of a qubit. We can also make the light oscillate only in the vertical plane. In that case, uh, we will say that this encodes a one. And we already know from previous steps and lessons that uh, we can uh, uh, talk about superpositions of uh, these states, 0 plus 1. And in fact, uh, when we go to the polarization picture, we can get diagonally polarized light, which we are going to call D. And this will encode our equal superposition of 0 and 1, or as we call it, a plus state. Good, so that's the next ingredient that we're going to need in producing entangled pairs of photons. So, how, do, how does polarized light actually interact with a, this nonlinear BBO crystal? That depends on the optical axis of the crystal. For now, you don't have to worry too much uh, about what optical axis is and how it's defined, but you should just remember that there is some kind of special direction in which the BBO uh, crystal can be aligned, and that's very important for the incoming uh, light and its polarization. So if the optical uh, axis aligned in, in this way and the incoming light is horizontally polarized, then the photons that are coming out from the crystal, the signal and the idler, will both be vertically polarized. So this setup, or horizontally polarized uh, pump light and optical axis in this direction, represented by this purple arrow, it uh, creates, it implements this physical transformation. It takes a horizontally polarized state and it outputs two vertically polarized states. On the other hand, we can also rotate the optical axis of the BBO crystal. And in this case, if we have a vertically uh, polarized uh, light uh, incident on the BBO crystal, then the uh, two photons, the signal and the idler, will both be horizontally uh, polarized. So in this case, we are implementing the following physical transformation. We take um, cat V and we are getting two 
cats h. So this already is the last step that we actually need to produce entangled photon pairs. What we can do is we can, in fact, and just so that it's clear, the polarization of the photon pairs is always opposite to the one uh, uh, to the polarization of the pump. So next, what we can do is we can take two of these BBO crystals and put them next to each other, and their uh, axis, their optical axis, will be orthogonal to each other. In such, a, in such a, a geometry, when we consider the pump laser to be diagonally uh, polarized, in fact, what we get is the following transformation. We get that the uh, diagonally polarized light will become a superposition of the horizontally polarized photons and vertically pol polarized photons. So you can see that we are changing a plus state into a Bell pair, a 0, 0, plus, 1, 1 state. And this is, in fact, how we get entangled states. But you have to keep in mind that in order for this uh, to work, the BBO crystals have to be very, very thin. This will ensure that we are not quite sure whether the photons were produced in the first crystal or in the second crystal. We call this the indistinguishability criterion. And if this is satisfied, then we can actually talk about genuinely entangled photons. If, however, we can actually tell where um, the two photons originate from, then we will again only get horizontally polarized photons or we will get vertically polarized photons and there will be no entanglement shared between these two photons. And another important uh, property of SPDC is that it's an extremely rare process. We obtain only about one photon pair per 10 to the 6 pump photons. And that's only in the state-of-the-art experiments. Usually this number, this 10 to the 6 pump photons, is much higher, or orders of magnitudes higher in commercially available um, lasers.